Dropped just the one set so far this year against Nicola Kiefer in the last round. That's had a couple of tie breaks en route. Federer to get us going. Well, that's a nice return from Nalbandian. Chris did mention he does have an excellent backhand. It's a devastating shot. And when he drives it down the line, it really is a marvellous shot. If you hear Valenite ex expressing his name differently, there's a reason for that. And that's that uh, the Armenian version, his grandparents were Armenian, is Nalbandian. But in Argentina, he's known as Nalbandian. That's right. With an accent on the A, or the, sec the second to last letter, to denote that that's where the stress goes. Well, Federer always seems to be able to come up with an ace or a good shot when he needs it. He's down left 30. He was down left 30 when he came up with that ace. Chris, I've noticed Federer has been coming up to the net a little more than he usually does in the last few matches. Is this something he's been doing, practicing with Tony Roach, who comes with occasion, him occasionally to the Grand Slams or occasional tournaments? No, no, I mean, he's only been speaking to Roach a couple of times on the phone at this tournament. The plan was never to work together at the slams, maybe be on the telephone to each other. But Roach didn't work with Federer in the run-up to the US Open, which is uh, slightly unusual. Break point to Nalbandian in the opening game. Well, it's a good game for Nalbandian, but you have to say that the Federer frame saw rather too much of that, uh, of the ball in that game. It certainly did. Well, Chris, of course, we have to talk about what his lead up to this tournament was, because between Wimbledon and Cincinnati, Federer didn't play at all. And then, of course, he came back, win Cincinnati. So he's only actually played one tournament between Wimbledon and the US Open. Yes, he played an awful lot of tennis in the run up. I mean, he. Um, he, he played Monte Carlo, he missed Rome, he played Hamburg, won Monte Carlo and Hamburg, got to the semi-finals of the French Open, then went to Halle, won Halle, a uh, week off, went to Wimbledon, won Wimbledon. Yeah. Uh, so he didn't play Gstaad this year and didn't have uh, Davis Cup in um, mid-July. So he, he just felt he needed a few weeks off. He will, however, have Davis Cup when Switzerland plays Great Britain. He already has committed to that tie, which will be in September 23rd to the 25th, and the loser will go back to the zonal group. The winner will stay in the world group, or will go to the world group. Yes, that's fortnight tomorrow. That's right. Alpandian's due to play Beijing next week before he plays a Davis Cup semi-final in Bratislava, starting a fortnight tomorrow.
Three on four stars from Federer. Federer was actually in the players' lounge eating just over an hour before this match started, just about an hour and a half, which seems to me rather leaving himself very little time. Usually players like to eat at least a couple of hours before. Yeah, they say an hour and a half is a minimum for digestion. Especially as he'll be doing some fairly strenuous warm-up exercises, I guess. I'm sure. Because this is a match they knew when it was going to start. So often they have only an idea if they're following another match. I have noticed sometimes takes a couple of games to get into it. He has a break point now, but he really needs an early break back, doesn't he? He doesn't look unduly worried, though. He never does, does no. he? <laughs> I think he rather enjoys the challenge here. the break back and it was done with patience what's interesting was that Federer was favoring the slice backhand rather than the top spin maybe he feels that the top spin unless it's a shot to win the point is going to play more into Nalbandian's hands by rising more whereas the slice keeps the ball low forcing Nalbandian to lift it a little bit more one all Dick Federer, another unforced error, number four. Federer has only lost three matches in 2005. It's phenomenal, isn't it? It's amazing. He's only lost three matches in a period of 13 months. That's right. Rally. Shame he had to end on an error. And now Bandian turns around a complete turn and gets back into the point. We'll go back to see it. Here we go. This is it. <laughs> and this is replay shown on the giant screen as well, hence the crowd's reaction. Twenty-seven miles an hour, pretty much top of the Federal range. I've seen him hit a couple of hundred and thirties here. Into kilometres, one hundred and twenty-seven is two hundred and four. Gets such fantastic placement on his serve as well. Lit.
beaten three closely fought games at the start of the match. Get the feeling Federer's just getting into the swing of things. He leads 2-1, first set. Mel Bandian, 1-2, first set. The obvious shot there was the lob, but it's possible the ball was too low for it. Yes, he does have an excellent top spin lob, which he might have to put to good use here today. We're not going to see a replay at that point, so it'll be interesting to see exactly how far off the ground his racket was when he made contact with the ball. His racket, uh, reaction there, you can see that he knew that was a double fault from the moment the ball left his racket. He also knows he can't give Federer any presents. That's a gift. Federer's anticipation is absolutely amazing. He just sometimes seems. It seems as though he's walking to push the ball back or to hit the ball back. That's flashy Federer, isn't it? Always in the right place at the right time. Absolutely. And there's the break. Oh, two breaks, actually. Three games on the run. Having rather gifted his opening serve. 3 1, first set. Well, Malbandian hasn't really found his range yet. I think actually getting all those gifts in the opening game hasn't helped Malbandian. I think it gave him a slight feeling of false security. Yes. Thank you. There's Federer at the net again. He used to be a very, very accomplished servant volleyer on grass and then decided that it was a bit risky to be going to the net all the time. And it's meant that he hasn't gone to the net as often as he perhaps should have done on other surfaces. As this is fairly low bouncing on a quick yeah. surface. It's a good one to go to the net on. Not that you need to go in when you can hit a serve as well as that. And four games on the run for Federer. Just the one break so far. Or one break in it at 4-1. Now Bandian, 1-4, first set. Try to see Mel at the net a little bit more. He's got good volleys. He's a very, very accomplished doubles player, just doesn't play a great deal of doubles. It's a good all-round game, Mel Bandian. But he's facing the best player in the world of the moment. Mm. 
But even he is human. Yes, he is. <laughs> Just a slight bit of laziness from Federer. Perhaps a bit of deceptive power on the backhand from Nalbandian, but Federer just could have taken an extra step to that backhand, instead of which he let the arm do the work and it didn't quite do enough. Bandian attacking Federer's backhand and getting some good results. I think he's picked up the fact that Federer's slicing, which means that maybe the topspin backhand won't be quite as reliable at the moment. game by Nelbandian. Okay, a couple of errors from Federer, but... Nice placement here from Nelbandian. Federer doesn't quite get to it properly. Well, because he doesn't seem to have a big backswing and a dramatic swing at the ball. People don't quite realise how much power Nelbandian can get. Error from Frederick's forehand. Lugging Federer there. 15, I know he lost the point, but it was a, just a wonderful undercut forehand from Federer, full stretch. That's the kind of shot where you realise realize how much natural talent the guy has. 15.30 at 4.2. Well, that's Federer. He's down, he comes up with a big serve. Was only 117 miles per hour, 188 kph. But the placement. It's an irony of our era that we say only by for yes, 117. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> well, Abandian ran Federer ragged and still couldn't win the point. on the defensive here. Not sure that was the right shot, but it was not a bad one. <laughs> no, something to change, up, change the rhythm a bit. Point for 5-2. Oh, yes. It's almost as if 
It was a slight lapse of concentration to get to 15.30, but he put it right with three great points and Federer leads 5-2. Narbandian, 2-5, first set. Products of the fact that he knows a bad second serve is going to get punished. Nalbandian's third double fault. Federer's yet to hit any, but I suspect we'll get more from Nalbandian. First serve percentage of just 53% at the moment. 10 out of 19. Not good enough against Federer. Well, I saw Nalbandian beat Federer here two years ago, but I'm trying to wrap my brains as to how he could possibly have done it. <laughs> because looking at it now, Nalbandian has nothing to hurt Federer. It was four sets as well, it didn't even go to five that match. Chris, you said you'd like to see Nalbandian come up a little more to the net. He did have an opportunity in the middle of that point to come up, and he should have done. He didn't. He stayed back, and what happens? Lost the point. I mean, he'll get past once or twice if he comes to the net, but I think he's got to at least make things happen, make Federer pass him. Yes. Set points. Well, the volley went long, but it was the right move by Nalbandian. Maybe that's something he's got to do a little bit more in the second set. Which will start in about two minutes, Federer having taken the first in 27 minutes by six games to two. Nice placement from Nalbandian, moving Federer from one side to the other. But again, although that ball was out, he could have come in there. Nice deep, what could be approach shots. Strange, isn't it? This is how the first set started. And it started exactly here. So played eight games in the first set, so this is where the first set started. And Federer was broken. Partly of his own making. Now Bunny has two break points, partly Federer's making. What 
an angle. Comes up with a nice cross court, but Federer just gets the angle. The break point. Well, Federer didn't want to start this set the way he did the last set by losing his serve, so comes up with two good points. Three good points. And to make it four. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Now, Bandian, love one in sets and games. Just what you said, Chris, trying to go for a little too much. Was a little bit late, that call. The net, the net B, but the, 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 the tie cut, yeah, you're very weak. You're very, no, yeah, you tell but the match should be done, so you're very weak in my team. Huh? No, for sure. Well, the, because now it's yet to delay. It, it's not your... It, yes. Your turn, yes, for sure. So he gets okay. a first serve, Chris. Yeah, because the machine but beeped. You, you, you can yeah, so they play a left. Yeah. As he overruled the Cyclops, it becomes the first serve. Oh, can Norvandi make something of his luck? Oh. Yes. Yes, he did. Pedro felt the procedure was wrong there. But I think if it was an overall, then yes, you do replay the point, and that starts with two serves. Yes, absolutely. No argument there. <laughs> Jamming Federer with that serve. hit a second serve, he's losing the point more often. Oh, oh, oh. vintage Federer. And he what? makes it look so easy. Because he's there so early and because of his quick movement, that looks so straightforward. It does, but just look at his balance, it's so perfect. Right for Nalbandian to come forward. Well, he should have had that. It was floating a bit. I think he just didn't time it right. But yes, I agree. It has to come in. No, he has to stretch too much for it. I hope the chair empire doesn't understand Spanish. You know, the frightening thing, Val, is, or frightening for other people, 
and left in the draw is that I don't think Federer has played anything like his best tennis yet. No, I agree with you. He hasn't. And uh, that might mean that uh, there's a, a powder keg in store for some luckless opponent in the semi-final or final, as happened to Leighton Hewitt in last year's final. Federer won all second set. 2-6 love sets in that final. Amazing. Although the th second one was a tie break. But Federer has won his last 22 finals. In other words, the last 22 times that he's got to the finals, he's won. That is amazing. The problem with Narbandian standing moderately far back, it means that he's vulnerable to that. If he stood in a little bit more, he'd take the ball fractionally earlier and would cut down the angle. I mean, Ferrer wouldn't put it past him, but he'd have to just find a slightly finer angle to do so. Saying, oh dear, what a silly shot to play. <laughs> well, not quite, but uh, close enough. <laughs> a little bit more explicit, should we say. Right. Well, Chris, you mentioned that Nalbandian is standing too far back. And I think that was a problem that Nadal had as well. He was standing so far back when he played against Blake. He was playing as though he's on a clay court. Now, Nobanian has a, had a lot more experience on a hard court. He's also playing from too far back. You can't take the ball as much on the rise if you're so far back. It's part of what I mean by him being a little too passive. Mm. And you see, I'm not saying he'd have got that, sir, but if he'd been a little closer, the angle wouldn't have been quite so intense. As it is, Federer holding for 2-1 in the second set. Quite a few members of the Argentine press sitting just in that corner. That's pretty much a perfect point. <laughs> I was just going to say that. Oh, that's even more perfect if that's possible. Yes, to be hypercritical, the volley wasn't struck as cleanly as it might have been. But well done, Nalbandian, for at least trying this. And a little nod of the head as if to say, yep, can't answer that. No, I think it would have been a winner against a lot of players. Not because they wouldn't have got there, but because they wouldn't have been able to come up with a passing shot.
So Federer making the error on the 20th stroke of the rally, which I believe is the longest to date. They wanted to go down the line with that backhand. A point to level at two all. Well played, Narbandian. He recovered quickly from the serve. And that nice gentle cross-court push is enough to allow him to hold serve. And you see Federer flying like this. Makes you realize how well Fabrice Santoro did to take Federer to 7-5, 7-5, 7-6. taking a set off him. Even Olivier Rojas, 6-3, 7-6, 6-2. Federer, two all, second set. I think Santoro played out of his mind against Federer in that match. Yeah. <laughs> Federer has been in the quarterfinals at least in every event he's played this year. <laughs> Caught the line. It did. Oh, this is interesting. Love 30. Barely. Let's have a look. Yes. Beautiful. That's beautiful. Not that fast. So a bit of a way swing. A bit of slice to take it away from Narbandian. Now here's a chance for Narbandian. 15 30, second serve. Yes, nicely done. It was a double punch, because the return of serve put Federer on the defensive. 15, Coming behind him, nothing Federer can do here. Oh, he read it. He did. Well played. There are his double skills. That's a lovely doubles volley, that. Getting the ball to stop short. And it's got the crowd going. This sense there may be a match on here. Now Bandian breaking for 3-2. Very loose for backhand from Federer there. Plenty of time to line it up.
Well, he caught the same corner that Nalbandian caught previous game on that same side. Mark of genius. Even his, let cords, his net cords end up <laughs> in the corner. Yes. <laughs> That's precision, isn't it, Chris? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's how Nalbandian has to play. Can't do that every time, but got to use that serve out wide, both sides actually, and then the cross court as often as he can. Thirty fifteen. Been painting the lines. Now Bandian's not happy though. He feels that at least the one on the baseline, maybe the one on the sideline, should have been called wide. There was also a ball on Federer's side that the crowd thought was out. Let's have a look at this one. That was on the line. It yeah, touched. That was clearly on the line. And that was a beauty. Well, he needs all the help he can get at the moment. He's still ahead. No, call was good. There wasn't a call, in other words. 3 2 30 all. Oh. Well played. There was a bit of bluff there on both sides. Federer waiting to see which way Nalbandian committed himself. Nalbandian shimmying to the left. Now watch this. This is up for Federer, Nalbandian certainly switches direction. Federer plays it onto his racket and lovely accuracy with the cross court. I think he liked that one. I'm sure he did, it was extremely well played. Well, it was just good anticipation, it was a good guess. Point for 4-2. Mm. Well. They say you've never truly broken until you hold your serve afterwards. Javier and Albandian. His brother, who's his coach as well. He's no longer with Eduardo Infantino. He's looking for a coach, but he says he's going to take his time. In the meantime, he's with his brother. Playing extremely well. And Knight Federer doesn't really have a coach either. Federer serving 2 4, second set. Yep, caught the line. In fact, I don't know who that is. Me neither. Camera being on him makes me think I ought to. Yes. <laughs> that was funny. Well, now Bandy was on his way to his chair before Federer had hit that one. <laughs> Federer knew, well, Nabandian knew Federer was going to finish that one off. Nabandian still a break up, 4 3 in the second. Changed his shirt now, has Nabandian. I like that one. So do I. Looks a bit more workmanlike than the orange one. <laughs> 4 3 Nabandian, second set.
There's a double fault going for too much, as you said, Chris. Yes, except I don't think he was then. I think that was just a lack of concentration. It was rather a feeble double fault. 76 miles an hour, hitting the net, and dropping back his side. I understand it more when it just goes beyond the service line at a good speed. Oh, yes, coming up on a beautiful cross court. Deep, penetrating shot. Look how he prepares for this, Chris. It's so perfect. And you see, he doesn't take his eyes off the ball until it's off his racket. Such a good point up to then. He was trying for a drop shot, I assume. What's, what was interesting was that Federer wanted the target. He wanted to bring Nalbandin in. That wasn't a drop shot, that was a short ball to bring Nalbandin into the net. No, it's not the racket, my friend. It's you. <laughs> and it's two break points. That is oh. just sublime. Fingers with Federer, Chris. You run out of super superlatives, don't you? I do, anyway. And you see, you see the replay of that, and he just looks, well, OK, so he runs for a backhand and plays it cross court. What's the big deal? It's the fact that he gets there very little time, so quick, and plays the precision shot on the big point. He's back all square at 4-all. Good move by Nalbandian. Got to try and do that as much as possible. Not willy-nilly, but just to work that opportunity. There are a few plays that he has to work on. Well, this is set up by a very nice return. But it's a three-point manoeuvre. The return, the cross-court volley, and then the, the one to finish it off if he has to. Federer was there, that ball come, had yeah, come over. He was. You know, not, let's not pretend that it's easy to beat Federer, but we've got to work on the strategy. How does a player beat him? And Nalbandian, given his strengths, has got to be using the, the cross courts as much as possible to get Federer out of position. Easier said than done. Absolutely. That's, that's the way he's got to try and aim to play. What's interesting is that Nalbandian is not taking up these challenges of coming to the net. And in playing the sliced shot and then retreating after it, I think he's actually pulling off the slice a little bit. The best slice is when you really lean into it, and that's why it's such a good approach shot. 40 15. Yeah. 
That was a disappointing game for Nalbandian. And it's put him under pressure because in a minute he'll be serving to stay in the set. Federer leading 5-4. That lob, I think, was about to drop just inside Federer's baseline. It was heavily topspun. And if we see a replay of that, I just look at Federer's footwork here. Look at the footwork. That's like Muhammad Ali at his best, almost dancing backwards. Federer is so light on his feet, it just seems to glide. Mirka Vavrinets. His girlfriend and his manager. Yeah, then. For more of a diary secretary. She, she deals with his day-to-day -day issues. The strategic ones yes. are very much handled by his mother and the, and the rest of the, the family management team. Love 30. That was out, thanks to the net. Yes, Federer and Merkin met at the 2000 Olympics in Sydney and apparently was love at first sight. She was a tennis player too, had to retire because she had knee problems. Yeah, she still hits with him. Yes. In fact, in many ways, she's as much of a coach as he's got. He talks tactics with Tony Roach, but I think she does a lot of coaching. Well, the Albanians are nothing wrong, really, apart from miss a volley in the first four points of this game. We've just got to hope that his best is good enough to hold serve. 4-5, 30 all. Federer had in this game lost the next three points Tactics. The pressure is relentless. He needs to be accurate on these cross courts. Four five juice. Brilliant. Oh, yes. That is tennis at its best. Did you count the number of strokes, Chris? I didn't. I wish I had. Has to be the longest point. What a point. Worthy of the best tennis in the world. But the quality of stroke making there. What a way to bring up set point. 
Now Bandian played that point so well. He wasn't fooled by the slice. He kept his length up. Oh. <laughs> well, now Bandian's angry, but he's just being beaten by the best in the world. And there are times when you have to say, that's okay. Oh, and Nalbandian has just smashed the head off his racket. Two sets to love, Federer leads. I have seen Marat Safin actually serve and lose the head of the racket, but that's a, a technical fault. Nalbandian's was not technical. Hardly. It was emotional. Well, it's true he's playing against the best player in the world, but he's probably annoyed at himself because he had the break in that second set. Yeah, but there's nothing he actually did wrong. If no. you looked at the tape after this match and say, right, what did I do wrong? I mean, the only thing you could say is that perhaps he's standing a metre too far back. And, and that means that if he were to step up a little bit, he would rush Federer a bit more. Maybe Federer wouldn't get into position for some of these shots, but even that's not certain. Serve and volley. On a second serve. Trying these shock tactics. Pedro struggled on his opening service games of the first and second sets. Dropped his serve at the beginning of the match. Mm. Saved two break points in the first game of the second set. That was an incredible second serve, right in the corner. Couldn't have got better placement. There's the Argentine flag. The sun is looking a little bit sad at the moment. Yes. It's a great time for Argentinian tennis, though. Oh, it is. Was it Hamburg 2003 when they had all four? It was, Argentines all four semi finalists. Ex in the semis, exactly. But what's interesting is that they've announced the Davis Cup team for the semi final against Slovakia today, and uh, it includes both Coria and Gaudio. And those two don't particularly get on, but it's just a sign that, that Argentinian players are pulling in the same direction. They desperately want to win something for Argentina. Big thing in that statistics 15 to 4 winners. For Federer. Well, I think if ever Argentina had an opportunity to win the Davis Cup, it was going it's to be. Year. It is going to be this year. Yeah. Now Bandian, love one, third set. And they've had two Argentines in the quarterfinals, both Korea and now Bandian. We don't know how much further now Bandian's going to go. But that's still pretty good from such a small country. And on a hard court. Yes, they've got a finalist at the French this year, Mariano Puerta. That was a surprise. Oh. 
Not that Puerto is not good on a clay court. He is. In fact, that's where he's best on a clay court. But last year, an All-Argentine fan in, in the semi-finals, three in Roland Garros, and Tim Henman ruined it for them by getting to the semi-finals. Excellent result for the British player. weariness there about Nalbandian and even that woman is hiding it hard to smile well two sets to love down against Federer nothing to smile at yet I mean Well played. <laughs> yes, and she's got something to smile about now. But how hard does Nalbandian have to work? Vamos. Vamos. <laughs> I think Spanish is improving, Chris. Oh, from a standing start. how Nalbandian would want to start off this his first service in this third set. Nalbandian thinking, no, surely not. Yes, yes. Surely not. I know he gets everything back, but surely this is not going to land in. And goes down as an unforced error but I'm sorry that's not unforced no you know he's got to play like that against Federer another break point Mental tiredness from Nabandian. He's having to play perfect tennis just to stay in points. Two successive backhand errors, but he hasn't played badly. He hasn't. He's actually had quite a good year because he's been in three quarter finals, including this one, of the Grand Slams this year. Won the round of 16. That's a pretty good record, although obviously he wants it to be better. Federer, two love. feeling is at the moment that this is not going to last much longer. Oh! oh. 
great return. That's probably one of his best weapons, that backhand down the line. Now, Bandian does it so beautifully. Yes, and that was a difficult one because it was on the rise. Oh, that's beautiful. The like, footwork, Chris. It's like watching someone being whipped. <laughs> you know, take that and that <laughs> and that. And, and the he way he runs around his backhand. And he keeps coming back for more. <laughs> that was an amazing shot because the footwork was just fabulous. really stamping out all last bits of resistance is Roger Federer. Three games to love he leads, third set. Now Bandian, love three, third set. He did what he had to do for that volley. It was just a little unlucky because it was actually hit it nicely. Because Federer has the match won now, it's become a masterclass. And now Bandy must feel like a bit part player. Or the, the fall guy. In, I'm sure in he a does. Comic duo. Except he's not smiling. Uh, no. Oh, Federer, what a flash of shot. Just rising onto tiptoes. Look at this. I think a lot of people in this crowd do understand Spanish. I'm sure they do. There was a little rumble, a murmur that went round a number of people. A lot of Spanish people in New York, a lot of the adverts on the subway trains are in two languages. Love 40. Yes, I'm sure large amount of spectators would have understood exactly what he said. Wasn't terribly complimentary. But the most important thing, I don't think Pascal understood it. No, I don't think he did, but enough people will that there'll be a little fine will come off an Albandian's prize money. He got it. Just got it, yes. Incidentally, when players are fined for misconduct, for code violations, the, the money goes to the development fund, the fund for promoting tennis in new countries of the world. So, in fact, in many ways, John McEnroe was a great servant to uh, <laughs> the development of tennis with his various uh, fines. Well, he played that point so well. Now Van Dien 
It was just unfortunate missing that last ball, but of course he's got to go for it. And Federer dropped that right at his feet. You know, whenever you're having to play the ball below the height of the net, especially when you're quite close to the net, your margin for error is very, very, very small. Here's the US Open logo. I've had it for several years now. It's a great logo. Federer, the master of the house. Two games away from a place in the semi-finals. Right shot to go for. Yeah, it's a bit unlucky. It was just out. <laughs> the consolation for Neil Bandit at the end will be that he won't be saying to himself, if only I'd hit that forehand across court rather than down the line, I might have won the match. He's been comprehensively outplayed. Absolutely. And this is the best that Federer has played in this tournament, because I've seen most of his matches. Yes. And poor old Narbandian is reduced to cannon fodder. Left hand to the ball, sideways on, eyes on the ball until the moment of contact. Put that in the coaching manual. Oh, it didn't go over. <laughs> now Bam would have, would have now Bandian would have said, "What that too?" Whether it would have happened anywhere, I'm not sure. Now, Bandin has played Federer into his best form. Well, they haven't seen a contest, but they've seen a master craftsman at the height of his profession. This is the man setting new standards in tennis. Now, Bandian, love five, third set. To Narbandian's credit, he hasn't given up. People might look at the score and say, oh, well, after losing the second set, I can see he lost heart. He hasn't. He's kept playing. He did well to get to that short shot. And put it away. There'll be some shots in the next few points, I suspect, which you'd normally only see on a practice court. Federer knows he's home and dry, and he can afford to be a little bit expressive at the moment. With his tennis, of course. Yes, not with his expression. Oh! And his racket talks. That was unfortunate to miss that shot. I mean, not that I think that now Bandian's going to do much more, but at least win maybe a game and perhaps try and break Federer on the next serve. Oh, I think he wants to win a game. I don't think any player likes seeing the zero on the score against them. 30 all. Oh. That's a shame. Two double faults in this game. An hour and 35 minutes played. And Roger Federer has match point. Mm. 
Well, Van Vian's not ready to go yet. That's as big a roar as we've had all night. Yes. <laughs> I think they want to see more of this, the crowd. Now, Bandy will have an even bigger roar if he can hold serve. Love five deuce. Lit. There's the roar again. And he's won a game. You don't get a smile out of Nalbandian. Doesn't smile at the best of times, really. No, he doesn't, no. So it'll allow Federer to finish the job on his own serve. 5 1, third set. Well, that's a good start when you're serving for the match. Tenth ace. Yes, it's on the line. <laughs> ace, ace number 11 after 98 minutes of play and it's match point number two and another one in case he misses this one that's a great return What an amazing <laughs> return and serve. Well, the Bandian's loose now. He's got his game. He knows he's highly unlikely to do anything here. But he's keeping it going. We're back to Deuce. Not a good return. And it brings up match point number four for Federer. Oh, oh dear. Shame it should end on an error. It really needed to end on a Federer glorious winner. But he hit enough of those. And a warm handshake from Nalbandian. He knows he's been beaten by the best player in the world. A class act. And Federer started to play some tennis that really does show why he's not just number one in the world. He's not first among equals. He's first apart from all the rest.